Well, hey there, buddy. Do you want to make your weapons buff, tough, and have the life-altering side effect? Well, I have poured over all the engineering for the last... Uh, months. And now I have a restraining order placed against me for every wooden desk. So you could say you ain't getting that wood no more. So, where was I? Uh, oh yes, there are some good, some bad, some useful, and some borderline pointless upgrades, or rather downgrades, that could be had, all by just grinding the game. Mind you, I plan on doing this for everything in engineering, so subscribe and hit the bell thingamajig for the upcoming parts in the series. Oh, but before that, this video is brought to you by my Patreon. Like, actually, literally, I did a questionnaire there a little while back, and vast majority wanted this series to be a thing. So, if you too want to join the bunch, check the link down in the description. And thus, the good weapon engineering has been delivered onto us by me, with lots of scripting and filming and painstaking editing. Yay, creative juices. It's totally not semen, I swear! Now then, these upgrades and experimentals are basically go-to ones. Unless you find something that works more for your pathetic attempt at a meme build, or a niche obscure gameplay. But in general terms, and even some subdivided portions, the following will be the best. And as per usual, let's start with upgrades and then go into experimentals. Though the first one, of course, will be the more simpler case of, well, just, it works, and that is efficient mod. This one takes a simple approach on weapon design, reduce the stats that negatively impact them, toss in a little bonus on damage, and sacrifice... Uh, nothing. Yeah, that's right. Not a single downside makes this a straight-up upgrade, and not a side grade for, well, any weapon that actually has this. Frankly, if I'm honest, I've always seen engineering as a way to side grade their weapons and tools where everything had some sort of a compensative downside. Like with beautiful women, for example. The hotter they are, the crazier it is. Due to complete lack of self-awareness, and life experiences as an actual human being, but here the efficient upgrade is just engineer tweak and poke the weapon, and maybe whisper some sweet nothings before bedtime, to eke out the maximum, like with PC overclocking. It's just tweaking your gear to the maximum, while normally the factory set stuff is just eh, good enough for the minimum achievable stuff. Still, this really feels OP. I mean, come on, no downsides, so that kinda makes it, well, OP. Hmm. Well, maybe. Maybe we're all conditioned to expect that nothing comes for free. So we expect to sacrifice a few slave children upon the altar of sacred engineering gods before we get something half decent. I guess that makes you think. Oh well. Next then is Overcharge. Now, this upgrade sacrifices a few children. Uh, I mean, stats. And children for damage. A general net positive. This one in comparison to efficiency is quite dwarfed though in everything but the aforementioned space penis damage competition, yet frankly this is the one thing that everyone cares about the most, and so a solid choice for a lot of weapons, except for maybe burst lasers and plasmas. They may not be the best combos, but hey, if you got the energy to spare and the power distributor is not on a suicide watch list, well go for it. Oh, but speaking of the fun times with Razor Blade, do you like Daka? Like, do you love Daka? Is the Daka, the da 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 I mean, the fire rate may seem like a good idea to increase on many weapons, which is frankly not a terrible idea. I'd caution against doing so in most cases. While well, compared with overcharge, they basically achieve the same goal, increase the overall damage per second. Though, the thing that a lot of people forget is that the projectile weapons have ammo too, and with more fire rate, guess what's gonna happen to that ammo count? I mean, I built this thing so you can see how picking overcharge is a perhaps a better idea. But this is good too! I it's just not quite as good! And so the last upgrade before experimentals start flying like grannies rammed by a semi, the only proper choice for a frag cannon is the double shot. Really, what is there to be said? Increased cliff size, added two shot burst mode and all that for the measly 10% range penalty? <laughs> this is a motherfucking space shotgun, it needs no range! But seriously, this tremendously adds to the total damage you can do before the non-triggerable reload occurs. I mean, seriously, is it too much to ask for the future engineers to make a manual reload button? 
Oh, in any case. On to experimentals. Oversized. It's a little topping of damage. That's it. It's a good choice. And while its counterpart gives a little bit more fire rate as a bonus, this, just like overcharge, just makes every shot better. Not more of it. Thermal conduit. Well, this is a definition of, Bob, you have a problem, brah. Where the more masochistically you flagellate yourself, the more you will finally destroy the target. Basically, the more heat you have, the more personal bacon you cook, the more damage you will output. Up to 50%. So at 150% heat, you will cook some tasty bacon at both ends, yours and your opponents. Even some meme lords have gone on to call their anacondas microwaves, for obvious reasons. Phasing sequence. Basically, this is the one thing that stands against the shield tanking elites. This mod, while it does penetrate the shields, does so in a fraction of the damage done. So while it's perfect against the clueless shield only builds, it will take notably more time to deal with a bit more smarter, more balanced build. Oh, and it only does hull damage, so while the shields are up, no module damage. Still, it's very good and penalty often is worth it, just to do that extra damage. Autoloader. Reload? Re what, what is a reload? No, seriously, what is that? Is that some sort of a salad that scrubs eat? Corrosive shell. Thanks to this too, the multi cannons just can't be beat at how good they are. Though this effect does not stack, it just means that you can put it on the smallest multi cannon and extra hull damage will follow. Seriously, this is another reason why no shield hull tanks are almost extinct. Thermal vent. Don't know what to put on your massive, huge ass beam laser? Well, here you go. Vent some heat. The Super Penetrator. Aside from the other effects, uh, extra penetrative aspects of the past experimentals that I've mentioned have been a laughing stock. Yet, the reason why increasing it even further for railguns is so good is simple. Module Sniping. Railgun is a hitscan weapon, and yes, with a horrible mechanic, but still formidable capacity in the right hands, that aren't quest deprived like mine are. So yeah, with the right training, the pinpoint destruction of your enemy will be undeniable. And this just adds to the fun. So there you have it, a good tier of weapon engineering. It's really all the best stuff, save for a few that, um, well, you could find out in the broken tier list that honestly just makes you question the whole engineering system and the person who came up with these ideas. In any case, next up then, as I said, broken tier list, and it will be juicy. Or perhaps you prefer to learn of average level of upgrades. Well, the baseline of that will also be in the link Hello. Still, let me know what you think, and maybe some of these are so bad that you could embarrass yourself by explaining it in the comments. Or perhaps share a good build if you have one. Regardless, of course, share the video around and all that good stuff. But as for me, well, back to banging the desk in hopes of making a good script that still won't be promoted by Frontier official media, because Yavix is a cunt!